Now, if you're kind of like me and you've been writing a lot of iOS applications over the past couple of years, uh, one thing that you'll notice that is pretty annoying and also pretty tedious is that every time you have to write a brand new file such as a new struct, a table view controller, or a collection view controller, uh, it involves a lot of typing and a lot of setup code just to you know make sure your application runs correctly. So the question here is, wouldn't it be very nice if you can set up something called a file template just so that you can avoid all this boilerplate code setup that takes a lot of time, right? Well, today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up these file templates and how to use them inside of your Xcode application. But before I do that, let me show you what a file template is going to allow you to do inside of my project right here. So let me switch over to Xcode. And on the left side of the screen, we have a very simple application created. It is a single view application. And whenever you want to create a new file, all you have to do is right click here and just select new file. So this dialog presents you a lot of different ways to create new files. And in order to actually access your custom file templates, you want to scroll down all the way over here. And I've gone ahead and created a couple of different templates called collection view cell, uh, collection view controller, and a struct on the right here. So let me just double click on the collection view controller and call this guy a simple controller. You'll see that whenever I create this file right here, it's going to auto populate everything inside of this entire file. It's going to take the file name that I entered and use it as a class name here. It's going to create my cell ID that I almost always need to register as my cell right here. And it's also going to provide you with number of items in section, cell for item at, and all the other methods that you need in order to kind of run your collection view controller correctly. Uh, down here we have our two initializers. That's always very annoying to type out manually. And the last thing to point out is this controller uh, file, simple controller, automatically conforms to the collection view delegate flow layout. I find that 99% of the time when you're using a collection view controller, you have to conform to this guy to provide the sizing for your collection view cells. All right, so that's how a file template works. Let me just show you what the struct template looks like by saying new file. And let me just type over here, BTA. And let's click on the struct file here. So let's say a simple struct, create this guy. And you'll see that my struct automatically has a name like that. It kind of uh, lets you avoid a little bit of typing. And that's a really nice thing to do. Now, without these file templates, what you have to do is to create the file manually. So you can do it a couple of different ways. Let's create a Swift file. You want to say simple like collection view controller, hit enter. And you have to type in all this stuff, right? First, you have to import UI kit, say class like this, and you know, simple collection uh, VC and UI collection view controller conform to the collection view delegate, see delegate flow layout guy, and you know, type in all this code. Uh, the other way that you can accomplish this is to go ahead and say new file and use the Coco touch class option here and subclass the collection view controller. So let's say UI collection view controller. And let's just take this guy in, hit next and create the file just like so. Now this is an okay solution, but as you can see, we are auto filling this entire file with so much code that you don't really need. I know most people use this option and end up deleting all this stuff anyways. So I don't really see this as a workable solution. So the question now finally is how exactly do you go and create these file templates for Xcode to actually recognize it inside of this dialog here, right? So new file and this dialog shows up your custom template files right here. Well, this is actually pretty easy to do. Uh, the couple of steps that are necessary here is to first realize where exactly these custom file templates are coming from. So it's actually located inside of this directory here, and I'm not really sure if this directory exists. So if you try to browse to this guy in the finder, and if you can't find it, you have to run this inside the terminal, right? So just make sure to open the terminal and pop this guy in. So just for example's sake, you just wanna open a terminal here and just run this like so. Now, I already have this directory created, so let me just exit out of that. And I'm going to browse to this folder right here, which is going to have this file templates and custom directory now created. So the easiest way of doing this is to go inside of Finder. And here we go, Finder, you want to go and 
At the very top, there's a go and go to folder. It's also command shift G, which I always like to uh, use as my shortcut. Just paste in that folder right here, hit the go, and it's going to take you into file templates and custom. Now, I already have these templates inside of my uh, little directory here. That's kind of why you're seeing these three custom file templates. So it's actually taking in the name here. So collection view cell, collection view controller, and the Swift struct right here. So let's go over an example of creating a brand new template. Uh, the way to do this is to either copy one of these templates here, but obviously you don't have this in your computer, I don't think. So the way to actually access a file template inside of your computer is to go inside of the default templates directory that comes with Xcode every time you install it inside of the applications directory. So go ahead and copy this entire thing. I'll provide these commands down in the description below just in case you need to access it. But you want to access this folder here and here is my file templates. Let me open up another finder here and let's say command shift G and paste in that guy. You'll see that inside of applications, uh, Xcode, contents and all this, you are provided with the default templates. That's kind of why we have the templates inside of the dialog in the first place back here, right? So these are the default templates. So the one I'm going to take is this one right here under source and Swift file. And you want to copy this entire guy and then go back to the other folder here. So file templates and custom. You want to paste it inside of custom. So let me just paste it in here. We get that. If you open up this file here, you'll see that it's just a basic file header and import foundation. So what I'll do is I'm going to modify this guy right here to say import UI kit. And let's just leave it as that. I'm going to hit save and close that guy out like so. Now I'm going to cancel out of this little dialog. And the last thing I'll do is I'm going to close out of the file templates now. And I'm just going to work on the custom file directory right over here for the rest of the video. And so here is a Swift file, right? I can actually call this whatever I want. So let's just say uh, LBTA file. And let's just put that all in caps here. Uh, once you make this change to this directory and add in this custom file template, you can go over here and whenever you click a new file and try to create something, right? You can go down to the custom and you'll see this right over here. So it says LBTA file. And that's exactly what this name is over here. So make sure to modify this to be whatever you want and it's going to show up in here. Now, I do recommend that if you want to speed up this process, uh, I do actually type in LBTA because I can just type in BTA, right? So what I mean is if you want to create this really fast, you can say new file. And my left hand is on BTA, so I can just type in that and just filter down to these custom file templates. So that's what I prefer, but obviously you can do whatever you want. Uh, in order to change this file correctly, you just want to, let's see, go back over here. So let's just say, uh, let's see, LBTA, uh, let's see, table view controller. Let's just give it that. And for the actual file name down here, the file base name, you can open this guy and start modifying it to be whatever you want, right? So you can say class and let's say custom, like let's just do this for now, custom table view controller and subclass UI table view controller like that. And for the actual view to load, you want to provide it as well. So override uh, function view did load like so. And almost always you have to call super view did load like that. All right, so I'm going to save this file now. I'm going to exit out of it. I'm going to create a custom table view controller now. So a new file. And somewhere down here, you are going to get the custom table view controller right here. Uh, you can type in that to filter it down. Click on that and let's say my, uh, see my table view controller. So let's just type that in correctly, hit the create, and it's going to appear right over here. So this is your brand new file, but as you can see, it actually didn't take in the file name for whatever you typed in in the previous dialog. So it should say my table view controller like that, right? So in order to get that to work correctly, you want to use this over here. So let me just take in this guy. 
And the trick is you want to use this right here. So three underscores and file base name identifier. So as identifier, you want to copy that and put that in your custom file. So let me close out of that, reopen the table view controller guide. And let's just use, instead of custom table view controller, let's just paste that in here. And so that's what my file looks like. You can type in whatever you want down below. So for example, you might want to provide the uh, number of rows per uh, section, whatever that method is called. You want to provide all that stuff that you don't want to type in every time, right? So what I mean is, so let me just do this for you. So table view controller, you want to say, let's see, I'm going to type in num rows in section, and let's just turn something like five and uh, cell, for, cell for row. And let's just say return UI table view cell like that. I think we are okay. So I'm going to copy this bit of code or cut rather and paste that in here. This looks okay. I'm going to save this now and just close out of that template file. And what I'll do is I'm going to create a brand new controller yet again and it's going to auto populate with all that custom code. So we are going to use our custom table view controller. Inside of here we're going to call this, you know, let's say Homer table view controller let's hit enter and you'll see home table view controller appears as your file name right here it comes with all of the methods that you need so if you're developing a lot of applications and you find yourself uh, creating these new files all the time and you have to you know either copy and paste all of this boilerplate code or type it out manually you don't exactly want to do that and instead you can use this trick of creating this custom file template so that all of the code that you almost always type out every time is automatically provided for you. All right, everybody, that's gonna be it for today's video. If you want the path to all the folders that you saw in today's video, all that stuff is gonna be available in the description below. If you wanna learn more about Swift development in general, check out the courses in the description as well. And if you wanna to subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this, uh, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, bye guys.